Well, another builder's collapsed. Let's have a look. Good evening, everyone. Florian here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Thank you all for sending me several articles about today's, uh, well, construction apocalypse episode. So this, this is becoming a, a, one of the largest playlists on my YouTube channel on a specific topic. It's kind of sad, everyone. Let's uh, check out this article here. So, what's going on here? Oh, hang on, I got a fixed. Uh, there we go. Polished, polished five-star operation here on my YouTube channel. So, this is from news.com.au. Major home builder Porter Davis collapses, impacting 1,700 projects, with Lloyd Group also failing. Written by Sarah Sharples. Australia's 13th largest home builder, Porter Davis Homes, has collapsed, suddenly placing 1,700 projects in jeopardy across Victoria and Queensland, while another major construction firm has gone under. Porter Davis Homes, which employs 470 staff members, appointed liquidators on Friday after failing to find someone to save the firm. Saeed Jani, Matt Burns and Cameron Crichton of Grant Thornton Australia were appointed liquidators of 14 companies and revealed work would cease immediately on all projects being conducted by the group of companies in Victoria and Queensland. Uh, this, this is, this is one, one reason why I'm happy I'm a home builder and doing it so slowly. You know, the only risk I have is me falling over and having to pay for renewing my building approval. <laughs> awesome, but still. And you got to feel sorry for these families. 1,700. No wonder the government had to extend the home builder time period because they're not getting projects finished on time. It's just a complete mess. Porter Davis Homes had over 1,500 current homes in progress in Victoria and a further 200 in Queensland. Just hours later, another major player in the construction industry, Lloyd Group, also collapsed with 59 projects and 200 staff impacted. Notice how most of these collapses that we're seeing are in the resi side of things. Except for these guys, building school, schools and government infrastructure. You'd think they'd be, you'd think they'd be bloody bulletproof, wouldn't they? Oh, shit. There you go. It's all the other factors then that are impacting them. Oh, boy. I need to start telling which sectors these players are in. So, schools and other government infrastructure had six companies placed into voluntary administration with Deloitte, working urgently to try and rescue the firm and find a buyer. Surely they'd have to. Melbourne's Bayside City Council revealed a number of projects were impacted by Lloyd's group's demise. Council is working with Deloitte to clarify the next steps for our projects under construction, which are the Dendy Street Beach Project, Pavilion, Tulip Street Basketball Stadium expansion, the council said. You'd, you'd think at least with these type of projects, there'd be, oh, they don't really, they sh back in the day, uh, government projects had provisions and allowed for and took reasonable steps for uh, unreasonable inflation in the costs of materials, which I would argue is playing a part in this as well. But then again, we don't know how much damage they, these businesses have all suffered over the last two years. Now, you have to remember, the government came to the rescue of the, well, the trades. But they also set them a trap when they allowed everyone to trade while insolvent. Now, I wonder how many businesses got into a bad situation when that was allowed. And it just took time to materialize. Because projects take years to finish a construction project. There's significant pieces of one-off work. It's not something you just knock over real quick. This is why everyone's saying, you, know, you get more warranties with a fridge than you do with an apartment. It's because they're, they're not really the same things. So I'm wondering if that's played a role. The construction firm had projects in both Victoria and New South Wales, including the, the uh, Will, Willowdale Sports Pavilion in property giant Stockland's Willowdale Community near uh, Leppington, and a major sports facility in Showfields in Sydney. Well, there you go. Deloitte said it was undertaking an urgent assessment of the company's books to see where costs could be recouped. Like others in the construction sector, and despite significant effort, Lloyd Group has been unable to overcome increasingly challenging circumstances 
over recent months that have eroded project margins, culminating in our appointment today. There you go. Increasingly challenging circumstances. I mean, we know what those all are. It's labor shortages. It's well, it's the lockdowns. Remember that? That was a big part of it. Remember the bushfires too? Material shortages. It is shipping costs, material increase, material price increases, an overheated market thanks to the government juicing up home builder and well taking tra- making it even harder to get trades. We do do appreciate that this news will be unsettling and potentially disruptive for employees and project stakeholders, contractors, and suppliers. I mean, I mean, here you go. You got to worry about the contractors, the subbies, and the suppliers as well. This is where when one of these companies goes under, it just ripples through. We remember hearing the story about the bricky that was owed four hundred thousand dollars from one builder, and that was his pretty, pretty much he was treating that like his retirement fund. In these early days, we'll be undertaking an urgent assessment of the business's financial position and project by project status, and immediately commence communication with project principals and stakeholders. We will also immediately commence an accelerated sales process and hold discussions with parties that might be interested in taking on individual projects. Meanwhile, for Porter Davis Homes, there are also 779 signed contracts with customers where building has yet to be commenced. Okay, well, that could be good. Hopefully they haven't lost any money and they can just move on to another project, another builder. But that's, I mean, here, we're, we're getting a brain drain here, can't we? With a lot of the, the capabilities of so many builders going under in the resi sector. And they're going to be people that are probably doing fine, and but just walking away. Can't, can't be bothered. Investigations are continuing as to what went wrong and the reason for the collapse, a spokesperson for Grant Thornton said. The extremely challenging environment for residential home building has directly contributed to the PDH group's financial position, with rising input costs, supply chain deliveries, uh, delays, labor shortages, and a drop in demand for new homes in 2023, impacting the group's liquidity, they said. Notwithstanding the financial support from shareholders and lenders, the group has exhausted options to secure the further funding required to allow Porter Davis to continue to operate viably and the directors were left with no option but to place the companies into liquidation. Porter Davis had been forecasting revenue of $555 million in this financial year, the liquidators added. We're not talking a two-bit company here. You're talking a half a billion dollar construction company in revenue. How much debt is outstanding is not yet clear. A small subsidiary of Porter Davies, a boutique luxury builder called um, Engelhardt Homes in Queensland, which was acquired by the group in late 2021, will not be impacted and continue to operate, the liquidators said. So he was. this is probably someone who was retiring, sold it to these guys, and, and I wonder, I, I'm completely just guessing here, you know, you, you, there's the handover period where the previous owner is still running the show for a while until it transitions and then get out. I wonder if that's what happened there. Yeah. Some poor bastard thought they'd finally you know, gotten free, found a way to cash out of their business and retire. And oh, just one year, honey, and we'll, we'll, we'll get it sorted. I'm, I'm making up things here. Let me know if you know. So, oh, boy. I mean, Grant Thornton said it was working urgently to deter- determine if a solution can be found to support customers and some employees including engaging with key stakeholders and potential interested parties who may be willing to take over the current customer contracts. The PDH Group Board of Directors said they regretted the current circumstances and that their efforts to secure a funding solution for the group could not be achieved. They further acknowledged the group's employees for their hard work and commitment to Porter Davies and were hopeful that a solution could be found to support Porter Davies' customers in completing their homes, the liquidators added. The construction firm was ranked the 13th 13th largest home builder in Australia with buildings starting started on 1,734 homes in the 21 and 20 financial year, according to the HIA figures. I mean, these are nice modern contemporary homes. The major Victorian builder is the latest casualty in the construction industry that has been hammered by rising material prices, supply chain issues, shortage of workers, government changing legislation, uh, shipping costs, and, uh, well, you know it all by now. 
So far this year, a dozen builders have collapsed early this month. Uh, yes, we're going PSP. Anything new here? Is this just the recap? Yeah, this is just the recap. So you, you get to a point where a part of the article is a recap of what's happened this year. So, well, let's uh, have a bit of a talk about this one. So there we go, everyone. Two other builders going under. One residential, not as surprising, but another one with council and government work. Now, you well, you kind of expect that to be good, steady paying clients. So it just shows you how much of a mess this is. But then overall, looking at the numbers. Okay, so remember this. We're, we're reading all of these articles, looking at this stuff about the construction industry going nuts. Or, you know, the construction apocalypse. Then we're looking at the statistics. The construction sector is still growing from you know, one year to the next. It's, it's, it, these collapses aren't, being, aren't significant enough to be detected in the size of our construction sector. I'm talking to people, they can't, they're still having trouble getting labor. They're still having trouble getting tradies. It's, it's, you let me know, guys. There's a lot of you in the game. How are you finding it? How's your your uh, six month look ahead? Your one year look ahead? You know how are the projects going? What's the pipeline like? We'll have to see, guys. I mean, this is just I've I've said it all before. You know, if you're working for one of these builders, don't put your eggs all in one basket. Have a diversity of clients. But that's easy to say, but it's bloody hard to do. I mean, when, when you're working for someone bigger than your firm and you just get hammered with more and more work, you just take it and you make sure you do it. And then all of a sudden, you get 90% from one client. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty bad. So, yeah, guys. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Check out Heiser Bim and Heiser Does. And if you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, you can support us on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links via Pocket Squares or call us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And I will see you all in the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now.